Hello everyone, hope you're all doing well, and happy International Museum Day! So, May the 18th is International Museum Day, coordinated by the International Council of Museums, and the first International Museum Day took place in the year 1977. Anyway, you can read further if you want to, but today we're going to have some fun! We're going to look at some real one-star reviews of museums on Google of four big museums to see why some people just don't like museums. Growing up, overall, I love museums. They make me think, they make me laugh, they offer free air conditioning, and that's a huge incentive for many people to step into museums, especially if you live in Taiwan. Seriously? This video is mostly for good fun. It's not to throw shade on any institution. Some reviews are just hilarious. Well, some actually offer, I think, some good entry points to think about museum-related topics. If you're in or adjacent to the museum field, you know that museums have a lot of problems. But that's not the main focus of today. And these reviews don't represent all visitors, obviously, and they're specific to the reviewers' experiences of that time. I only picked museums that I I've been to myself in person, so I have more context. And I am not associated or affiliated with any of these featured museums, and much of what I would share would also be based on my personal experiences and some knowledge that I have of the museum field so far. Though I wouldn't object if any featured museums or related institutions offer me a lifelong membership or even a job because you're impressed with my video for some reason. Let's get started. First off, we have the Metropolitan Museum of Art, commonly known as the Met. The Met is an art museum located in New York City, New York, in the United States. You might have seen the Met in movies, TV shows, and of course from events like the Met Gala. <laughs> or as some say, This is the Met Gala after all. Gala. Met Gala. The Met is a gigantic museum with works from all around the world. Some famous artists you might know include Van Gogh, Rembrandt, Monet, Thomas Cole, and the whole American art gang. America said our old friend Louise Josephine Sarsan de Belmont, Don Titan, Alice Neal, and so many others. Let's start with our first review. The first one is so spicy already. Maybe give the stuff back to regions where they were stolen from. Okay, if you're in the museum field, you know what's up. I think one question that I would like to invite everyone to think about is how these objects that we see in museums today came to the museum. How did it happen? Why did it happen? Thinking about the history. Should these objects be here at the first place? And a key word to look into is repatriation. So I'll leave it there. Second one, the utmost disrespect of art by setting up dining tables along a whole section of important exhibition, preventing visitors from appreciating the art. If this is acceptable, how about a seafood restaurant in front of Washington crossing the Delaware? Filed multiple written complaints with the management office over the last five years, but not a single response. Art is obviously not as important as revenue. Ooh. Okay, from my visit a couple of years back, I don't really remember seeing scenes like this, so I don't have much context, but I don't know, this reminds me of, I forgot what whether it's in Taiwan or somewhere else that is an aquarium and they put dining tables next to the tanks where you can see living fish and you know coral and fish is also on the menu. I don't know. What do you think? Okay, next one. Luke said, exhibits didn't come to life like in Night at the Museum. Would not go again. Luke, I'm sorry that things didn't come to life and it's probably because you went to the wrong museum. So instead of the Met, you should probably go to the American Museum of Natural History or to the Smithsonian Institution or maybe try the British Museum. Go visit one of the three and let us know. <laughs> and some people are just very short and to the point. Like this person said, ugly, very ugly. Uh, okay, this user first name starting with evil apparently didn't like what they saw and that's fair. There seem to be a repeating pattern of complaints, like people are complaining, you know, frontline staff members are rude, security guard is rude. I just had the most racist encounter with a security guard at this museum. I was already inside a museum, passed through the entrance after I got my tickets and through a few galleries. Then on my way into the inner gallery, this white security guard randomly looks at me and asks me for my ticket. You can read the rest, just, you know. I know, from my visit, I do remember that at the Met, they would ask you to put the, the ticket sticker on your clothes so staff could tell that you bought a ticket for entrance. As a person of color, I have my fair share of 
racist, discriminative encounters in museum spaces, and trust me, they are not pleasant. This person said in the end that just be careful if you're Asian or ethnic in any way and put on the sticker. My trip was entirely ruined by this and I'm still traumatized. I feel it so strongly, and I feel that sometimes it's not really the content of the museum that really ruined the visiting experience. I think most of the times, as you can see from these reviews later on, it's really the interaction with the frontline staff members, with security guards, with people in the museum space with you at, the, at that time. Okay, Davis is very direct with his point of view. It's cool if you like art. I don't like art. Okay, Davis. Thank you. And Sophia said, I went there yesterday and immediately someone Fortnite danced in front of me. Wouldn't recommend. Okay, Sophia, I'm really curious if the Fortnite is the video game Fortnite that I think of. Is the dance this one? This one? Or is it this one? I'm so curious. I'd love to know. Next up is the Prado Museum. The Prado Museum is an art museum located in Madrid, Spain, and it's one of the largest museums in Spain. And like the Met, is a constant winner on the list of most visited art museums in the world. I've been there a couple of years ago. I spent six hours in the galleries looking at art because I'm just a happy art nerd. I still remember when I saw the magnificent Las Meninas by Diego Velázquez. It was such a life-changing, mind-blowing experience that I still hold very dearly in my heart. The Prada Museum is home to many famous work of Spanish and other European artists mostly, especially around the 15th to 19th century, such as Francisco Goya, Hieronymus Bosch, Peter Paul Rubens, Titian, and of course Diego Velázquez. Now let's see some one-star reviews, shall we? What a terrible experience! We bought tickets in advance but were denied entry. My wife is disabled and unable to climb stairs. They advertised the museum as being accessible, but it is not. They told us the elevator was closed and they would not open it. They also refused to refund our money. If you are disabled, please be aware that the information on the Prado's website is not correct. The Prado Museum is prejudiced and discriminates against the disabled. This is very important. This is about accessibility, which I think should be taken seriously. Not only museums, I think, any spaces, you know, shops, restaurants, libraries, amusement parks. I think a welcoming, safe space should not only be for able-bodied people, but for more, for people with disabilities, neurodivergent people, people on the spectrum, and I really hope one day, truly, truly, for everybody. Okay, many one-star reviews of Prado show repeating things like rude staff, rude security, security guards, it's frustrating that no photos are allowed. Like this one, it says, pretty paintings, horrible staff. It's totally forbidden to take pictures even without flash or from far away. I tried to record a small video to send to my cousin who is a painter and after three seconds, a woman in a uniform jumped at me and said not to record. I said, why? She said, the director doesn't want it. Some other staff members treated some other people the same. Seriously? What's her problem with cameras? Even the Smithsonian museums allow using cameras and the El Prado is nowhere near them completely ruined the whole experience. Okay, so many things to unpack. About the no photo thing, I actually wrote a paper about this. So there are so many reasons that I gather why some museums don't allow any type of photo taking, video taking at all. One thing is mostly about the, the rights of the work because of the copyright and other things. It's just, it's quite complicated. But yes, I would feel frustrated if the only answer an institution gave is the director doesn't want it. It's just, that's frustrating. What do you think? Do you hope that museums allow photo taking? And one reason some museums they don't like and don't encourage photo taking is because they want to have true art lovers enjoying their collections instead of vulgar tourists taking photos of everything. As a foreigner in these spaces, like when I go to visit Italy, when I go visit Spain, photo taking for me personally is very important because I need those photos for my research papers, for my assignments, for my teaching being a TA to my students talking about these paintings. You know, if I have photos, it would be so helpful for me as an educator, as a researcher. Okay, I think the baseline for me is whether or not you're bothering other people and you're being disrespectful of the artist, the artwork, or the institution. So respectful, you know, three second photo taking of that one painting you like. I think there's space for discussion. What do you think? Moving on. Okay, this one's very fun. Okay, this one. Got lost. Help. I don't know how to get out. I've been here three weeks. The Prada Museum is gigantic, and I remember I also kind of got lost. Leah, I hope you got out successfully and you're safe and sound right now. If you happen to find this video, comment down below and let me know that you're safe and sound. And other complaints include, doesn't have Wi-Fi, 
great art though. So I don't know Wi-Fi, whether Wi-Fi is a d huge deal breaker for some visitors, that's very interesting. And some reviews are just not helpful. I don't really know what some people really mean. Like Jamie just said, museum. And some people get really frustrated. Like Matthias said, go to Taco Bell instead. Just, you know, forget about the Prado. Just, just go to Taco Bell. That would suffice your crave for art, apparently for Matthias. So <laughs> moving on, the Field Museum. The Field Museum is a natural history museum located in Chicago, Illinois in the United States. At the field, you can see many taxidermy animals, gems, ancient Egypt collections, including human and animal mummies, and of course, Sue the T-Rex. I think the coolest thing is they have working labs where visitors can see real scientists handling objects, doing research on site just through the glass along their corridors. You can see, you know, real people working behind the scene or a huge museum. I think that's pretty cool. Let's see why some people don't like that. Okay, the first one is kind of hilarious and just so ironic. I probably feel similarly if that happened to me. Only one vending machine has water and it's out of order. All other ones have sodas. How are people supposed to hydrate? Even when I tried to buy a soda, the machine took my cash and supposedly it didn't work. Can't find one staff to help me. Nowhere to be found. Shame. Not kidding when this picture says you'll need water to survive. So you'd better... <laughs> so you'd better start looking. You guys probably did it on purpose, so everyone has to buy $5 waters from the beast room. Like apparently, I think this is from an exhibit that this person just saw about water, da, 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 da. but you'll need water to survive, so you'd better start looking. <laughs> Okay, this is just ironic. Imagine if you just finished an exhibit about how crucial water is for human survival and you need water in the museum and you can't get any. That's frustrating. <laughs> And here we have Steven. I sent in a sample of a meteorite to get tested at one of their facilities. Very unprofessional. I sent in my sample seven months ago and have not heard anything back. I've called 10 times for the past four weeks and no one answers. And I can't leave a voice message. What a scam. First of all, I just think it's really cool that if you ever have something that, you know, could be tested or researched in a museum space, I just think it's cool. Good luck, Steven. Hope you receive an update. Okay, this one, this one is just chef's kiss. I know this is supposed to be a joke or so Bob said, awful, awful experience. Truly a strange and scary journey that I don't intend to repeat. Visited on May 25th thinking this would offer some compensation for my experiences at the nearby aquarium and planetarium. I didn't learn my lesson, I guess. I'll start at the beginning. When the T-Rex Sue started making fun of me, she moved that giant bony jaw and used it to... <laughs> spout some truly hateful remarks. She made fun of my baldness, calling me a globe head and saying that my beard made me look like a homeless cabbage. <laughs> I went to the ancient Egypt exhibit, but as soon as I got there, the mummies all came alive, looking horrifying, and started playing poker at the little table in there, insisting I join them. They refused to let me leave until I complied, locking me alone in the area with them and threatening to wear my skin. I shouted for guards to help, but nobody came. So I relented and sat down with them to play poker. They insisted I use real money, and thanks to my poor luck, I lost the hundred bucks in cash I had on me. I couldn't get it back, and the mummies all laughed at me before before they were reduced to making very loud and obnoxious crow sounds that every darn thing in Chicago seems to make. <laughs> Incredibly terrifying and financially devastating. Sounds like some people's college, college experience. Apart from these, everything else was a disaster. The Savile Lions were just two old dirty socks on sticks, and the DNA Discovery Center was used to create human-bird hybrids that looked in absolute pain, and the Jurassic World exhibit was just a room with a white light and a ton of fake dinosaurs made of popcorn balls on strings dangling from the ceiling. It was ridiculous. Never coming back, that's for sure. Wow. I don't know, but I wouldn't mind playing some poker with mummies. While waiting in line for a 3D movie Antarctica, employees slid down the hand I prefer to have my handrail minus an employee's butt on it. Fair. Amazing place to learn and explore a bunch of interesting things. However, it's overpriced, making it very hard for under-income people to enjoy the wonders inside. For my visit to the field, I admit it's a little bit hazy, but I do remember that there are different levels of ticket pricing and some parts and some experiences you do have to pay extra. In many cases, that would really bar some people, you know, low-income families who would love to have this educational experiences. Yeah, there are many things to think about regarding, you know, museum entrance prices and what are some things 
thinks that should be free. John over here is very disappointed. You pay $700 to get in and you don't even get to ride the dinosaur. What a ripoff. If I were running the place, there would be dinosaur rides every weekend and the best riders will be selected when I mobilize my dinosaur army and take over Cook County to turn it into a commune fascist anarchy. I, I, I don't know anymore. <laughs> Okay, next up, the Uffizi Gallery. The Uffizi Gallery is an art museum located in Florence, Italy. If you're a fan of Italian medieval and Renaissance art and beyond, the Uffizi Gallery has works by some big names that you might recognize, such as Leonardo da Vinci, Michelangelo, Raphael Botticelli, Artemisia Gentileschi, Rembrandt, Durer, Cimabue, Giotto, and so many more. Okay, second time I was in Florence, I know I was, I am so very lucky. I was with a friend and the whole experience was just truly magical. When I was at the Uffizi, I think I spent seven hours queuing for a ticket. <laughs> Just kidding. I spent seven hours in the museum, in the gallery, looking at art because I'm such a huge Italian Renaissance nerd and I just, ah, I was so excited. On the note of tickets and waiting in lines, some visitors hold a huge grudge because of that. Time for some one-star reviews of the Uffizi Gallery. I was disappointed about the lack of important paintings. Just three Leonardo da Vinci works that I can put on the map. Okay, but it's confusing because this person included two paintings that are not by Leonardo da Vinci. They are by Botticelli. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And important painting wise, I feel that what type of things are considered important, it really varies from one person to another. So in a repeating pattern about rude frontline staff. And I would like to highlight this one. It was the worst art gallery I've ever been. The staff in the gallery had horrible manners. They were talking kindly to Europeans, but they were shouting rudely to Asians. I think they were racially discriminating against us. I thought it was a great art gallery, but the staff were terrible at manners. At the Uffizi. Again, it's not throwing shade on any particular museum in general, but just as a person of color, as Asian. Looking back at my experience at the Uffizi, I've experienced some of the worst and most unpleasant, I feel racially discriminative behaviors from frontline staff members. I've been yelled at for things that I didn't do, it's another person, but somehow some frontline staff members, they would assume that it's all my fault because of the way I look. I've been questioned why I linger in front of a painting for such a long time because they think as Asian, obviously you couldn't understand classic and elegant Italian Renaissance art, right? It's it's serving for me to try to separate those unpleasant experience related to some frontline staff apart from the overall very wonderful experiences of you know seeing great artwork in a big museum. So fellow PLCs, I see you. No representation of the artistic greats, the the Tracy Emin, I think it's Tracy Emin, Damien Hirst, Ralph Harris, and J Jack Vetriano. Okay, I feel like this person might be at the wrong place. Like like Damien Hirst, um, he is a contemporary artist. So I feel that unless it's for a special exhibit, the Uffizi Gallery wouldn't have modern artist artwork. It's like you go to a pizza place and you get mad because they don't serve beef noodle soup. Okay, this one. Beautiful gallery and architecture as expected, yet incredible rude and obnoxious staff. Don't expect to be treated with any sort of respect here, especially if you're not Italian. And otherwise exceptional visit tarred by horrendous staff. Couldn't phrase it better myself thinking about, you know, some of those honestly traumatizing experiences in museum spaces. Otherwise exceptional visit but just tarred by horrendous frontline staff. And some people are just really to the point of why they feel frustrated and they want to leave this one star review like this person just said, too cold. Okay, fair. Yeah, so what are your thoughts? Do you like museums? Do you not like museums? Yeah, frontline staff members are so crucial to the whole visitor experience. For example, I feel like most people, we wouldn't get the chance to meet like high level staff, like behind the scenes staff, like curators, conservators, researchers, but what we would meet and interact with are frontline staff members, like ticket staff, security guards, information desk staff members. So I feel like those encounters are really crucial to as a visitor and also as a person of color, whether or not I feel welcome in this space. It's very important. Not everyone can separate those unpleasant and even racist encounters with some staff members who happen to be rude versus, you know, the whole wonderful experience of visiting a beautiful museum, seeing beautiful art and collections of natural history. So, and I feel that for museums, how to really make visitors feel welcome during their whole visit is one of the biggest challenges. And honestly, when it's done right, it's really, really wonderful. What about you? And have you ever leave any one-star museum reviews that you'd like to share? And any funny stories of your visits like um, have you ever played poker with mummies or rode dinosaurs and I don't know, talk to lions and stuff? Let me know in the comments below. Overall, I 
still like museums and I think museums have so much potential and sometimes the responsibility to help make the world a better, kinder place. As someone from Taiwan, I feel that museum visits since childhood really broaden my horizon and let me know that the world is so big and so diverse and there are so many things to learn, to think about and to help change. I can't wait to go visit some museums in person, hopefully, and maybe make my contributions in the museum field in the near future as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care, stay safe. I'll see you again very soon. Bye!